Well, guess what? I had become a human alarm. And maybe that is good. I used to win racer uh, races when I was a little guy. Because when I was born, I had a real flat spot. And I could run around the room and it would never fall off. So I'm a good choice to be the alarm. And the lion roars, who can but prophesy? <laughs> but the alarm is going. For this vision has been written for the appointed time at the end, and it has come, it has not lied. People may now behold me whose soul is not upright, because there is no damn good man not, or woman, not even one, Romans 3.10. And I'm a, I am confess to be a piece of shit, and uh, you can't get more humble than that, and yet people see me as proud or arrogant because of my personality. I've walked up to one million people in my day. The Lord has given me a fairly quick tongue. So uh, I'm being judged all the time and uh, wrongly so. So we need the healing of the great physician, the doctor of doctors, for the Christ alone through his healing hands are ministering now to our hearts, to our minds, to our spirits, and to our soul. And we must now go deep. If we do not go deep, then we're going to be in deep, deep doo-doo. And uh, shallow as a glass of water, we cannot be in these end days. Uh, many are going to say, Lord, Lord, he's going to say, too bad. Sorry, Charlie, you let your love go out, which was me living in you. Get ready to be cast out into the outer darkness of lovelessness uh, where there shall be much weeping and gnashing of teeth. Commit not uh, that unforgivable sin of becoming loveless. Why does the way paved towards hell with our uh, conditional love as we practice letting our love die day by day becoming, uh, how do you say, uh, waxing cold so we need to arise and our frigid cold hearts need the flame of purity of love to spark us back alive so flame back on like johnny torch and in these days uh cahill gabran spoke of philemon a greek uh, doctor and he spoke about christ as being our master physician and he said the Nazarene was a master physician of his own people. No, no other man. I don't even think I need my glasses. Yeah, I'm having a good vision day. And uh, salute. So I'll start over. Philemon said this. The Nazarene was a master physician of his people. No other man knew so much of our bodies and of their elements and properties. He made whole all of those who were afflicted with diseases that were even unknown to the Greeks and to the Egyptians. They say he even called back the dead to life, and whether that's true or not, it declares his power, for only to him who has wrought great things is the greatest ever attributed. Uh, they say that Jesus also visited India and uh, the county between the two rivers and that Yeshua, Christ the Lord, he went there where the priest revealed to him the knowledge of all that has been hidden in the recesses of our flesh. And yet that knowledge may have been given unto him direct by the gods and not through the priests. Uh, for that which remained unknown to all men for an eon may be disclosed unto one man in but a moment. And Apollo may lay his hand upon the heart of the obscure and make it wise, said that Greek doctor of Christ. And many doors were opened to the Tererians and to the Thebans. And to this man also certainly sealed doors were open for Christ Jesus. 
his love went before him. That was his magic. That was his miracle. And it was always alive as a little children. He always remained as a little boy at heart. He never lost his spontaneity, which most people lose. So it's time to let the cruel fires of life make you uh, better and not bitter by looking at everything as a miracle. I, I used to look at nothing as a miracle and then I flipped. And so then it's time that we need to all flip. Uh, so this is a celebration of the Lord's house of beloved and the glory of his latter house is greater than that of the former Micah 4 has predicted. And so in this hour, um, know that the Lord, he entered the temple of the soul, which is the body. And he beheld evil spirits that, that uh, conspire, the kind of conspire against our sinews and against our bones and against our heart and against all of our inward places. And he beheld the good spirits also that spend the threads of, on the loom of heaven to make silk, silken, feathery uh, things that go in flight. And he said, methinks it was by the power of opposition and resistance that he healed multitudes of the sick. But in, it, it, it was in a manner unknown to our philosophers. And he astonished fewer people with his snow-like touch, and it then retreated. And he surprised the hardened limbs uh, of many with his own calm, and they yielded unto him, and they became at peace as he spoke the word of healing unto them. And Christ, as the doctor of doctors, he knew the ebbing sap within the furrowed bark, but how he reached the sap with his fingers, I do not even know. Perhaps he reached it with his heart. And he knew the sound of steel underneath, the sound that even rust makes in the wind as scratching uh, of the spirit of doom comes to make its announcement. And he knew that he freed the sword and made it to shine like no man ever could have tell, because he knew that the sickle of his tongue was like a... Uh, uh, instrument for the harvest that was before him. And so in this hour, he says, sometimes it seemed to me, that doctor said, that Christ heard the murmuring pains of all things that grow in the sun, uh, and that he then lifted them up and supported those, those things, not only by his own knowledge, but also by disclosing them uh, unto them their own power to rise and to become whole at his whispering command. And yet Christ was not much concerned with himself uh, as a physician. Uh, he was rather preoccupied with the religion of love and the religion of forgiveness, uh, which is one and the same. And uh, he was uh, not concerned with the politics of this land. And that doctor of Greece, he said, and this I regret, for first of all, we must uh, need a sound of the body to be heard. And uh, the ones that heard Jesus cry, they called him a snake. But these Syrians, when they are visited by illness, they seek arguments rather than medicine. And the pity is that the greatest of all the physicians who have ever lived, uh, Emmanuel, our God with us again soon, he chose to be but a maker of speeches in the marketplace instead of being uh, a doctor exclusively. And so in this hour, it is time to rejoice like never before, for the healer has come to touch our hearts. And so in this hour, maybe I now need to put my glasses back on smaller print. And so it came about that 
the spirit of prophecy came through House of Beloved and said this, and this message of the great physician is for the healing of your hearts before you have spiritual strokes and spiritual heart attacks where you let your love wax cold as you prepare to be cast away, cast away into the outer recess of the hell manufactured by your own lovelessness. And so the spirit came forth as the Holy Spirit, the Holy Dove of love. And as the breath of God blew our comforter onto the scene over Shiasa of House of Beloved, the revealed woman of Revelation 12, in whom whose days of her ministry Satan would be removed for a thousand years in accordance with uh, Revelation 12 because he was the accuser of the brethren as it is written and he would have instantly made God a liar for our Lord God is saying to all people uh, all people keeping their love alive to all people that have their love as a child to all people not committing blasphemy of the Holy Spirit to all people not doing that unforgivable sin he says to all people keeping his love alive him within us going that flame that we cannot let go out or we do inherit the darkness and the horrors that go with it desolate be not and so the message of healing is now coming forth as the fluttering dove of love brings forth healing under the whitest wings as he transforms into the most regal eagle of the eons so that we may shine gloriously by the radiance of the glory of love reflected of Christ from off the crystalline, bottomless, uh, blue crystalline ocean of his adoration for one and all. For I tell you, he's never loved us. He has adored us. We are angels in the flesh and at, in our afterlife, we will be neither male nor female. So in this hour, it is time to get excited for the realities around us. And so for all of you found uh, yourselves called to prophecy by the will of one greater than your own, by a voice which cannot be silenced, hear now the word of that whispering healer of healers, that one Christ the Lord who with but a touch of the hem of his garment can remove sickness, and with but a gentle butterfly kisses blown towards us, the healing of the mind will create our bodies lining up so that we might heal from within and heal from without. And his voice was one that could never be silenced as, uh, as it is composed of the silence itself. And this is why the Lord has been singing over us joyfully with silence for, uh, for the moment he can receive one and all of us back unto his bosom. And so in this time, this golden hour, know that even the fish of the age were multiplied to feed uh, the many prophets by his spoken com com command. The multiplicity of the duality of the word be to manifest something from nothing and with his eyes with the eyes of a prophet that bread of life was broken he was torn from the side parting the veils uh, one final divide but he looked and he spoke uh, our unity in the garden of uh, Gethsemane so that we could be whole and in that uh, consummation there could we abide for the last supper upon the great mountain of Isaiah 25 who will come and feed the master's household meat and food uh, Matthew uh, 24 45 Christ the Lord predicted it would be he who would come uh, to feed the master's household meat that would build the great mountain uh, covered with spiritual food of Isaiah 25 where the Lord promises he is now revealing 
uh, and removing the veil from off all nations. The veil of love that has not allowed us to see that our conditional love uh, has never been love at all. It's always been faith love, a veneer love, a uh, love that is not in spite of everything and through it all kind of love, love that's not dedicated and loyal and faithful and merciful and kind and long-suffering is not even love. All of our conditional love, uh, you know, how many people have uh, uh, millions of followers on Facebook and do they have any friends really at all? And so, you know, our shallowness goes before us, our narrow-mindedness, the ignorance of love have we embraced as our uh, most comfortable pillow. So it's time to prepare the Last Supper for we even become the meal. And the mystery of mysteries of Revelation 10 is over. The first is last and the last is first and the seventh, uh, trumpet has sounded and all nations are now the Lord's because the message of Malachi 3 1 that prepares his way uh, has been spoken and he says I am your God you are my people I have forgiven all your iniquity and I will never remember it I will write my law and my love upon your hearts beyond that none will ever even need to be taught of me for all who love me as a child who commit not blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, all of them know me, from the least to the greatest, for I am the love within them. And uh, let, uh, there is nothing anyone has ever had to do or to know, saith the Lord God, to be saved, uh, because they've all been saved unless they commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, the unforgivable sin of kicking Christ out of your heart because he is literally our love. People, without him and us, we're no damn good 100% of the time. But when he's living within our heart as a little child with our love alive, there is no condemnation over us. All those walking with the Spirit, we are forgiven, and it is time to embrace that forgiveness. So uh, the mystery of mysteries is also using division to heal. This has been the art of the ultimate deal. Revelation comes by breaking of that steel, and now the steel will be broken asunder as the little birds sing and we better value that because if the messages of love from house of beloved my channel and uh mine forward does not start helping this world we're going to go down with the ship uh, and the world will never rise again as isaiah 25 says the world in pieces uh nothing but death Deuteronomy 18, 18, uh, Acts 3, nothing but total oblivion, said Jesus, Matthew 24, 22. He wants to cut these days short, but uh, he cannot because this message of his love needs to be going to get to all people, to all tribes, to all nations. Revelation 14 says so. This is the flying scroll of Zechariah 5 that these two girls, uh, mine forward, Anna Grace and uh, House of Beloved, uh, they have built brass mountains that can never tumble. And because they are all bringing forth the everlasting gospel, God's word was only closed until the time of the end. And they have the scepters of God's authority in their hand kingdom age authority to go forth in the name of love declaring that satan has been vanquished and removed in accordance with revelation 12. and so in this hour read about the woman of uh, the woman of revelation 12 shining in the glory of love that is shiasa the anointed gospel writer of this hour and so in this hour Revelation comes by breaking the seal which was as steel and Christ the Lord it is like cr cracking a wishbone to break that kind of strength because stronger is he than anything he has made in this world. So it's time to let our broken hearts let his love in and uh, so the refiner's fire is coming so that man's 
hearts. Uh, our hearts without his love have become uh, a starvation and only his uh, love alone can feed uh, our salvation that it comes through our inborn need. So now, now a hunger for love will take root upon the highest heights of our crescendos of mounting greed. And so watch this mountain move. You with the mustard seed uh, as a bread of life, we partake in pure consummation. And this is our true answer, uh, emancipation to, for our liberty and freedom within love so the healer may come forth for us as that dove of love to touch but our brow, to put the mark of the Lamb 777 indelibly stamped thereby as Revelation 9-4 says. And so watch the mountains move as God tears down mountains that are not made of brass. The ones of brass will never budge. And uh, so it's time to realize we world, we live in a world and now we have a manual uh, technology, a living word. We have biology, uh, biology that the human mind cannot spy. I tell you, all the world, even the rocks, are crying out. Everything makes a noise. So on the beloved and on the flames of his love, his flames of his love are just too high so that a fire cannot consume itself, but only that which is a lie. And there's never been any um, defense against any lie. All men have been liars. Only God has been true. And so what can be lacking when the essence of his love is absolutely everything? What is left to seek when the essence of his love is, is uh, not a thing to be still? So it's time that we know God and by looking not without but within for he is residing as our unconditional love within our unconditional love that we must not let go out and our souls therefore know the hidden place where we can always go to see the face of he who is the beloved the blessed the adored he who is our majesty of majesties the great physician who brings forth the medicine of joy to restore the happiness of our salvation unto us and he told us that ha heaven never needs to be chased and so that we can find it unmovable a place that we could never walk away from sure we often go two steps forward one step back but with his helping hand and that doctor keeping us healthy we will never quit going forward and the more love we give away the more holy we start becoming as we become uh, Christ-like beings ourselves by letting ourselves diminish and his love within us to increase like a supernova. And so it's time for the fulfillment of love and grace that will come from behind our human faces uh, we've worn masks so long, it's time to reveal our true self and to take off all the masks that hid the beauty of love that has been under um, stern faces and angry road rage mentalities uh, that people have so bad they don't even have to be on any road any longer as they are on the wide road to hell with conditional love for others when this has never been any any real love whatsoever and so it's time to repent of our sinfulness that uh, strikes our love and makes it mute and so it's time to realize that we need to take a short walk away from the world while still remaining in it as we turn around with the intent of following in the ways of healing 
If you're a drinker, drink less. If you're a smoker, smoke less. If you're whatever you're doing, do it less. Well, except some good stuff. But the truth is moderation in all things. And we must not lose balance, but we must not be moderate in our love. That is the exception to the rule. So center your attention only upon what love has already sent unto all of us who have been like prodigal sons, who have now finally finding our destiny, has always been awaiting us right at home. And we've been looking for answers outside of ourselves when answer has always been just a condition of our own loving hearts if we would but let it shine and stop hiding our light. And so we are like one returning, like a prodigal, and we have the inheritance of the kingdom ahead, and Eden is ahead of us. And know that two curtains are now closing on the recital of good and evil. And in this bridal chamber, the voice comes from so deep that uh, she asks uh, myself, we both and Anna Grace recognize our beloved and we become void of ourselves as much as possible so we can be absent of identity that's been composed of the essence of free questions existing in eternal luminescence uh, and that flame of passion and flame of love will always be kept alive by him who is our love and through him none else beside him has anything else to say greater than the love that he is sending with but a gentle kiss so love is where we need to be love is what we need to be we need to love our lover and our lover has given us his love we are the bride of Christ. And we are watching from the eye that sees everything that cannot itself be seen. We are looking through eyes of love and eyes of hope and peace and faith. We need to be subjects of um, what the eye projects. So to the love that brought uh, many here, may love come to take you back home. Home is where our angels' wings are beating. Our guardian angels have come unto us and are walking with us along this journey. And we must leave the safety of the shore for our priceless pearl of great reward is calling us out into the deep and where his treasure of excellence is his love shining as the stars. And so we must journey and leave the safety of the shore behind, away from fear, away from the shadow of sedition, away from a desolate heritage of Isaiah 49, 8 that most have had because we have not seen the forest of love for all the trees in the way. And we cannot pass this cup. Higher can we not go uh, than where the Lord wants us to go upon eagle's wings, the widest wings of the snow, snowy eagle, and uh, all the hands of the world needs to open so that we can receive it. If we have our hands closed, he cannot give us anything. And for our own, we need to let our mind be still, and we need to stand still to see the salvation of the Lord. And so in this hour, do not let your love light go out because it is, if it is, then comes the silence and then the bird stops singing and then we must prepare to take off the vision of truth to behold the lie, the lie that we have to go to hell if we don't believe God is love. But people, if you're a loving person, it don't matter what you believed. What you believed is wrong. Everything what we've all believed is wrong. Adam and Eve had no belly button, people. <laughs>